Hi. Today Hello. we've got uh, Bianca Dragomir, who's the director of Avarsen, the cluster of renewable energy companies in the province, in the Spanish province of Valencia. Uh, uh, Bianca has been director of Avarsen for seven or eight years, and uh, they're doing a set of interesting work um, on the development of renewable energy in the within Spain. And we're asking her a few questions today um, on the work and why it's of interest to participants at the Tipsy Conference. So, Bianca, you wrote a, a blog for the Making Green Deal Happen series in March, which contrasted the potential of the cluster-led transition with the conventional industrial policy approaches. So. Do you think this approach is helped and supported by the European Green Deal? Well, thank you very much, uh, John. Um, well, first of all, uh, as we all know, to reach the net zero emissions uh, continent uh, by 2050, we need uh, more. We need uh, more. Uh, we need basically more speed and more impact in the decarbonization um, initiatives um, uh, that we are leading, and we definitely need uh, sort of a ripple effect uh, in the decarbonization initiatives um, to create to, to effect, uh, an effect that actually affects uh, all stakeholders and all um, sectors. So we need a, a systemic approach here, and that is why uh, a single point interventions are really not enough. At Avicen Cluster, uh, years ago, when the cluster was created, 15 years ago, it was created as a. Uh, it started actually as a network of stakeholders, of business stakeholders in the clean tech industry specifically in renewables. And it, uh, it, over the years, uh, we evolved it, we grew it into an innovation ecosystem in the clean tech industry, gathering renewables, but also smart cities or sustainable cities, uh, water cycle and circular economy, and also gathering not only business, but government, municipalities, specifically working directly with mayors, but also founders and research, uh, researchers, research institutes and including citizen uh, unions um, um, in this process. So it's um, so we've seen in practice that uh, any transition, specifically the energy transition is a process. It, it requires an orchestration of different stakeholders and different uh, sectors and an integration of this multiple voice. And definitely I, I can say that uh, I live it on my daily work um, and I see that transitions can happen over time but also only if we uh, address all these all these stakeholders all together at the same time. And you know, the Green Deal is an all-encompassing strategy. It actually explicitly says that we need to address not only the energy transition, but also the uh, affect the circular economy or the money or, or the mobility or the buildings. And we need to do it at the same time, and we need to do it with all the stakeholders. That is why clusters. Uh, which are uh, organizations that agglutinate a multiple type of stakeholders, business, government, uh, research, investment are key in this. And we are at a time in Europe where we cannot miss any resource in this journey because we are already going with a lot of delay in the decarbonization um, uh, objectives. So we need to speed up. And that's why the 3000 industrial clusters that are across the whole continent are key in this space, and I live it on my own skin, skin, skin in, in the Valencian region for a number of years, and we've seen that we can leverage investments uh, in cities and regions, uh, and that um, basically everybody uh, finds, um, finds a, a, an opportunity if there is a co-leadership of this change, and uh, also if uh, a co-ownership of this change is created. And that is why a cluster or an ecosystem, regional or local, is the perfect texture in which all these stakeholders operate together and they do it systemically. So uh, how did you get, come on, there are lots of small and medium-sized companies that are very busy, they're, they're, they're under pressure, they're, they're trying to make uh, a living. How did you get them to think more broadly about their uh, the, their wider interests and to build this sort of coalition with 
uh, a, a range of towns and municipalities. I mean, this isn't common. This is quite unusual. So how can this be spread? What, what are the lessons from your experience? Well, you know, um, at, the, uh, at the end, uh, the businesses look at the market opportunity and they, uh, they at the beginning, they, they were quite uh, reluctant to, to actually share information and to, um, to, to open up uh, working uh, um, together with other SMEs that have sometimes uh, even the same service, the same offer, the same solutions for municipalities. But actually we brought together uh, the municipalities, small and medium sized, as uh, with their um, urban challenges, we opened this up, we created um, a space in which they actually shared openly what were their uh, key challenges. And then the businesses saw that there's this pie is really huge. There's a huge market opportunity with small and medium sized municipalities. And uh, even all together, uh, working or making the most of or selling all their uh, putting their all their time there, we wouldn't uh, arrive to to absorb all these uh, these market opportunities uh, that we were uh, um, unveiling um, because the pie is really big. So there's there's a share for everybody, and that's actually created a shift in the mindset because we actually um, started to work with municipality as problem owners. That's, that is the key. And uh, with uh, SMEs as solution providers. Um, and sometimes even the SMEs created a, a partnership together to answer, to provide an answer to the municipality because we create, and how does it work in practice? We create a roadmaps for each municipality uh, and we co-create actually these roadmaps because uh, the cluster is the one who triggers um, um, uh, this, this, uh, this, the initiation of the roadmaps, but actually the, so the, the companies are the ones who answer with solutions. And actually we, we, we saw that uh, that actually creates change on the ground because uh, that leverages investments. The municipalities have started, uh, we've, we've been running this project for, for five years now, but the municipalities have started to uh, put their money uh, where their mouth is. Uh, two years ago, um, we uh, managed to leverage uh, 49 million euros from small municipalities on these specific projects that we were co-creating with, with the businesses. And last year, at the end of last year, we managed to um, uh, leverage 160 uh, million euros of small municipalities. Now, in the Valencian region, we work with all, any municipality that, that is willing to work with us in the Valencian region. So far, we've um, managed to work with uh, almost 100 mayors uh, um, that are directly connected to the cluster. And we have 160 SMEs in the cluster from all the technologies of the green, uh, green uh, transition. And um, and actually, we've we've seen that these uh, roadmaps actually they are uh, they are the, the let's say the engine uh, for their for their uh, roadmaps for green transition. And in the next generation EU now, the municipalities, especially the small and medium size, who many times are disconnected from the innovation agenda or even from the green transition. And we've seen that they, 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 they had limited resources and they have really limited resources and they need even the knowledge of, on what is a, a smart grids, for example, or uh, new technologies or new innovative business models um, in the local energy communities, for example. So all these things are, are a great help for them. And that, that what, what makes, what that creates a, a, a bigger shift that other municipalities join this, this journey and open up even more. So the, the, key, the key issue here is that there was a, 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 a there was a, um, a blockage in, in terms of the, um, the sharing of information from the municipalities towards the business. And the clusters has managed to open this up and to bring solution from the territory. And, um, and when their solutions are not there, because let's say that the challenge of the specific municipality is um, uh, um, we don't have those solutions in the market. We co-create them with small um, SMEs, with startups, but also with research centers. And then on top of that, uh, investors come also to put their money where their mouth is. And um, all this creates a ripple effect 
when also the regional government actually comes and says there's a market uh, information here that, that, that this 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 ecosystem is creating a shift and i want to be part of it and let's see where is the gap how we can work together and then the pol the new policies are being made and the funding of course and we are we are really happy that over the years we see that uh, there's an increase in this the funding that is being leveraged and as uh, as uh, just to bring it back to the to the to the uh, actual uh, moment where we're we actually looking uh, all of us to the next generation new funds the municipalities really need these roadmaps they really need these uh, let's say um, all these pillars to come together in a coherent let's say start of a strategy uh, where they can actually put it and organize calls tenders but they also can build on that innovation and that's what we see that uh, that that's how it works because that it's it's a um it's a it creates an effect actually that this more business want to join more uh, investors want to come the regional government is more and more interested and therefore more municipalities want to join this because they need these roadmaps they need this access to information and they feel alone in uh they feel siloed uh if they are out of this ecosystem so we are now having um a 300 stakeholder ecosystem we've created over the last year in which basically that that actually co-creates um uh together uh these roadmaps uh, even sometimes without the clusters in the intervention because there's a dynamic that has been created online during the pandemic and these roadmaps are being self-generated if you want uh the clusters uh, inter inter intervention as a neutral stakeholder is less and less uh, active and that allows us to also look into different points of intervention in, in terms of innovation to creating um, large-scale strategic projects and to really tap into projects that actually uh, make a dent in the energy transition with municipalities and business. Fred, do you want to explore that a bit further? Yeah, I mean, the European Union has been interested in the local and regional for quite a long time, but I suppose mainly from the perspective of cohesion, of transferring resources from the rich parts of Europe to the poorer parts of Europe. I mean, the strategy you're presenting is really suggesting addressing the regional local from a perspective of innovation for accomplishing the green transition, uh, which is a different balance, really. Um, do you think the European Green Deal recognises this shift in focus? Um, does it understand that a regional and local strategy in Europe for innovation is perhaps a bit different to one which is just about social cohesion. Thank you very much, Fred. Um, well, I think it's not so explicit. It's not so obvious as it as the Green Deal states, basically, uh, the work, the, the transitions that are going to need to be developed. And therefore, that creates, um, that creates a gap and, a, and a maybe a uh, also um, a lack of um, awareness of different stakeholders that actually the transitions are happening at the local and at the regional level. Actually, the region is where the music is played, as, I, as, I, as I've been seeing in, the, in, in these past years uh, as the CEO of this regional cluster. Um, and um, the Green Deal is, is basically um, aims at national governments setting up targets and, and executing um, and uh, then it's it's their turn it's, it's it's in their hands to to work with different stakeholders in the territory now if we speak about spain 40 percent of the next generation new funds are gonna be uh, uh, managed through regions and cities um, and um, and that is a big challenge uh, also in itself uh, and I think that the regions and cities are getting up to speed in this in this space. Um, it, I would have personally preferred that the Green Deal uh, explicitly says uh, that uh, we need to directly engage with local and region uh, in, in this in this transition because that is the key. Um, but uh, I do I am confident that uh, the member states would would look into into the potential because actually if we really want lasting impact if we want strategic and uh, and lasting impact uh, with what it what, what it actually conveys uh, with the job creation long term job, job creation uh, and not only specific projects 
that uh, will be developed uh, and will just meet a specific target, then we need to work, uh, they need to work with regions and, and cities. Um, uh, and let's be honest, the Green Deal means in practice local interventions. So uh, whatever project will need to be uh, implemented, it needs to be locally and regionally and um, better use the ecosystem, better make the most and involve the, um, the stakeholders so that actually this project is too sustainable at all levels uh, rather sooner than later. Uh, now, to speak about my, my experience, we've started already to work with the region already during the pandemic when the Green Deal was already announced, uh, we've already started to create strategies at different level, at entrepreneurship level, at, um, at the renewable, at speeding up the renewable energy investments, because to, to, to create this, to, to reach the objectives, uh, for example, in the Valencian region, we need to, uh, by 2030, we need to accelerate um, uh, 6,000 megawatts of solar uh, projects and 4,000 megawatts of, of wind projects. Uh, so to speed up from 18% of renewal, renewable share in the energy mix in the region today to 43% by, by 2030. And that's a big challenge in terms of many, many aspects, uh, the investment, the legislation, the, uh, the, the, the professionals, the skills, um, uh, etc. So we started already to, to create programs and mechanisms on that. For example, uh, one of the priorities that, uh, that, the, that the region has is in, in the space of the local energy uh, communities of renewable energies that allows the citizen to participate directly in the, in the generation and consumption and sharing of the en renewable energy um, with the neighbors or with the uh, with other stakeholders around, like for example, the tertiary buildings or the or the, the city council. So we've created a, a, a scheme in which uh, this is a priority for different ministries. Uh, we've created a hub that actually is led by the by the cluster, and uh, in in this hub uh, there's the municipalities and the business, but also the union of uh, property owners, but also the union of consumers besides the region and the different ministries of the regional government, all together working to create these uh, renewable energy uh, communities. And these are types of investments that have, all, have also not only worked with the region, but also submitted uh, in the expressions of ministry uh, of interest that were launched by the ministries last year, already in view of launching the new calls of the next generation EU. And as an outcome of that, we've seen that already the few calls slowly, shyly, there's already some programs, some calls that are being launched, for example, specifically on the energy communities of renewable energies. There's um, already uh, two weeks ago, uh, a call on, uh, for pilots uh, in, the, in this space, 40 million euros have been launched by the ministry. Not to speak about the fact that also the region already committed uh, 20 million euros for this uh, by 2030. And already for this year, it's been announced a few days ago, uh, 16 million uh, of euros uh, for that. So um, I think this is going in the right direction. Uh, we do see a little bit of... Um, uh, a, a big need of finding the agility and the strategy in creating this transition in a coherent way, but also a need of um, uh, upgrading the execution capacity that um, the cities and regions have. And if we do it systemically, if we count on the local actors and connect them, orchestrate them, I think we have a big chance to really create sustainable and systemic transitions into practice. Yeah, I mean, your success is very much bottom up and local. And the challenge then is how do you actually encourage replication or similar initiatives? And I'm interested in your views on that, because the risk of top down programs inviting other people to be like your cluster is that well, people fill out the forms and tick the boxes, but they don't necessarily really understand the dynamic. So what have you got to say about making sure that what you've discovered works can actually be picked up and transferred in other places? Thanks, Fred. Well, you know, just using the common sense, just like we listened a lot to the stakeholders in the in the ecosystem and started to integrate their need one by one 
and then tested, validated, and scaled this approach up, um, and then applied it, replicated it to other subsectors or to other settings. I also think that the region needs to also listen bottom up to, 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 to these stakeholders, uh, but also the, the ministry as well. I think that we need to, uh, to see what actually works and scale it up. Uh, it doesn't work like, like it, it's not just, it, this, is, this can be on paper, can, be, can look nice that we've, we've worked bottom up, we have consulted different clusters, different associations, different entities, and then we, we involve and then we launch something that anyway we had in, in mind. It, it can, there's a risk of, of doing this only formally. And we've seen this over the years and over the Europe, uh, let's be honest. Uh, but I do think that now it's the time we have the unprecedented opportunity before us and we need to do it we need to nail it. Uh, otherwise we will really fail and this is a lifetime opportunity. This is a historic opportunity. And I think that there's a growing consciousness of regions, uh, especially in our, in our region. I see a growing consciousness of this need of, of, of uh, meaningful work with the stakeholders because the challenge is really big and it can only be done if we actually truly believe in it. And we have the, the people that have, that have demonstrated that over the years that, that um, they know how to work with this. If, if we, just looking at the next generation EU, from a cluster perspective, I, I see that we've now as a cluster, we have managed to create a, a, a robust business model uh, a model in which we work with different stakeholders and we integrate their needs and we created a, a, a co-ownership co of the change um, and um, a setting, a texture in which everybody becomes proud of being part of this change. I think that is the key. Uh, and I wouldn't imagine us uh, aiming to work on Next Generation U on large scale transformation, a strategic project without having validated, without having already achieved the, uh, uh, a, a robust business model of work with this sector. Because it's like you're, build, you're building um, um, uh, the roof without uh, the base of a house. So we need to have those stakeholders that have, that are, are, are fully, there, there are smart plugs in the territory, very deeply connected and um, that agglutinate a critical mass of stakeholder to create these large scale uh, transformational projects with the region, with different stakeholders and to really go to the big, to the big impactful project. That is what I think that creates a ripple effect. If we, we manage to put this in the loop of the regions and cities, and I think that this is, this is more and more clear, clear and clear uh, in, the past, in the past months or years, and if the member states also see this, uh, it's a modus operandi that really works, at least in our case, we've seen that it works. And as a, as a cluster practitioner and, and, and expert also of the European expert group on, on industrial clusters, I've seen that the regions where this um, actually, where, where, where this uh, was um, um, taken to, to, the, to the practice, um, the close connection between region and the cluster and the industry, the, clo the, the creation of these shifts with this consciousness, with the systemic uh, approach, um, it works. So what we need to do is now is to scale this up even further for, the, for Europe to raise its vibration and to really make the most of these ecosystems and clusters and regions, more than 280 regions that we have across Europe, because that is our, maybe now our added value. Now we have the funding, now we have the targets, we have also the stakeholders and, and the territory, the, the ecosystem, we just need to connect, join the dots and connect them and make the, the, the most of them. No other continent has that. So that's why I believe that, uh, that Europe has a competitive advantage here and we need to make the most of it. People need to know more how this works into practice and that it works actually very well. Bianca, uh, wonderful. I think that summarizes and gives a sense to the, uh, to the conference participants, the potential for place-based clusters uh, and the potential within the European Green Deal for uh, extending and spreading them uh, uh, way beyond Valencia. So thanks very much indeed uh, for giving us of your time and uh, all, all the best of success with the initiatives that you're taking forward uh, in the coming months and years. Thanks very much indeed. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.